Hello everyone. So this was going to be a video on my braces and how my braces have been going. I got them on on May 9th. So it has been two and a half months, almost three months, probably I think 11 weeks at this point, maybe a little bit over 11 weeks. And so my last update was two weeks ago and there have been some big changes between my appointment that I had and then um, the two week follow up that I did was the last video and my teeth had moved a lot and they're continuing to move a lot which makes me it makes me have a love-hate relationship with the springs. The springs obviously help your teeth move a heck of a lot faster than just the wire because they add a lot lot more tension. I am talking terribly today. They add a lot more tension between your teeth so that they can be spread apart more but at the same time they cause a lot of problems. So I'll show you kind of my teeth right now, right here. Mm -mm -mm. So for those top ones, there used to be absolutely no gap right there. They used to be touching on both sides and there wasn't even enough room for them to put brackets on the teeth when I first went in to get them. Because if you notice on the bottom, and I've mentioned this before, they did actually want to put all the brackets on as much as possible while they were doing that because it's a big kind of deal where they have to dry your teeth and put a whole bunch of stuff on and get a whole bunch of tools out. So they'd prefer just doing it all in one shot and then just be able to attach them when they can. But they couldn't even fit the brackets on there. So in the past, um, it's been four weeks since my appointment. They've moved a crazy amount. I'm pretty confident that there's not enough space for them to actually fit quite yet, but there is a lot of space, which is really good because the orthodontist was considering removing four of my teeth. There was the two plans, which one was removing four of my molars. I think they were my six year molars so that there would be enough space or two just trying these types of braces and seeing how they moved around, which is why I got the Damon braces is that apparently they help move your teeth around a lot better and they're a lot um, better of an option for people that have not a whole lot of space but also really crooked teeth so it's one way that you can try and get um, your teeth straightened out without having to remove them because then he was worried that taking the teeth out there'd be too much room and that kind of changes the profile on your face I guess so and my concern about that was quite frankly just the pain and the discomfort and how much it would suck to have my teeth removed so I'm happy with the progress that my teeth are actually making right now and the springs are definitely helping they do provide quite a bit of tension and um, I'm not sure if you're really supposed to do this or not supposed to do this but I do actually push on the springs sometimes to, and then you can feel the tension of pushing the other teeth backwards when you do that so I'm probably not supposed to do that because that's actually messing with the braces but I kind of do it anyway the other thing is the bottom teeth which you can see that these two are pretty much straightened out at this point and then there's more space that the springs are obviously making for the two teeth that are pushed backwards. I think that when I first started treatment it seems like they ended up being pushed backwards and out of the way so that the two middle teeth could actually line up properly not overlap and give them more space but now it seems that as the springs are kind of pushing um, the teeth, other teeth backwards and making more space that they're actually moving forward a bit themselves. So I'm hoping my next appointment is on August 15th and I'm hoping that, again, they'll be able to take out the springs and be able to attach those. Because again, although the springs are really helpful in making your teeth move and making them move quickly, because there's quite a gap that was created even in, you know, a couple days with the springs, especially with the top ones that they actually made longer so that there would be more tension, they are a pain because the top one especially it actually sticks out, it curves out obviously because it's not attached to your teeth and curves right under where my lip is. So it messes with how I talk and kind of a lot of the time makes me sound like I'm drunk because my lip actually gets stuck on it and then I talk funny. So it's a little bit even worse than a retainer 
because it uh, gets in there and just it's just really annoying. Um, it also can pinch your lips, which hurts, and then when you're flossing your teeth, this is one, one kind of tip, I guess, that I have for this week, is that I found these to be quite helpful now. I wasn't sure if I'd use them, but I do like these with regular wax floss a lot better than the Oral-B Fluffy Floss. Fluffy Floss. I like them better because the Fluffy Floss, when you're flossing in between your teeth, obviously flossing right here is not an issue because there's way too much space but down below I could barely floss when I first got my braces on and now it's a whole lot better because they've been moving around but if you get the fluffy floss it actually gets caught on the springs a lot more like it can get caught on your brackets but it gets caught pretty much every time on the springs and then it rips it so you have these little tiny fibers that stick and stay in your springs and it feels like you have hair in your mouth until you're able to like finally get a grip on them and rip them out which is really hard to do so i'm finding um just using regular floss and these little plastic bits which you can um get fairly cheap and they're fairly nice and slim so it's not like you're keeping a whole bunch of things with you and spending a whole lot of money and you can just use the regular floss that's in your house and so I find that that works a lot better than the fluffy floss. My husband had mentioned that maybe the fluffy floss is helpful in the fact that it expands a little bit more so that you can actually kind of clean a bit better but I think that it doesn't help out as much as like when you compare the fact that it leaves these little tiny hairs in my mouth I'd rather just deal with the other floss which everybody else in the world well not everybody else in the world but which a lot of people normally use the wax floss they don't use the fluffy floss when they floss their teeth so I think that I'll survive with just using the wax floss um, like I said my next appointment will be on August 15th I am going to bring my son with me and we'll see if he needs braces his teeth are wicked crooked too yay me yay genetics so I'm thinking that he may actually start needing something like a retainer and if he does then I will also show kind of his journey as well here so you'll get to see adult braces as well as children braces and don't worry if he doesn't need braces because all the other ones have crooked teeth too so one of them's bound to need braces and then I can show you their journey too a very very expensive journey that will be except that your children braces are typically covered by your insurance whereas mine are not mine are all out of pocket so hopefully we'll be able to escape the braces situation with at least one of them because my husband never needed any sort of um, orthodontics for his teeth at all so hopefully since we have six children we will not have to get six sets of braces because that's over college education. You can either have braces children or you can have college education. It's up to you. All right, so that's all for today unless I can think of something else and then I'll add a little snippet afterwards, I guess. But for now, that's pretty much it, I think. Oh, there's one more thing. Is that when we did go on vacation, I forgot my mouthwash at home, so I figured if I was buying more mouthwash, you know, should I buy the stuff that's more expensive and like the zero stuff that doesn't burn or should I just stick with regular floss which is cheaper since I probably can't bring it back with me anyway. So I ended up just buying the cheaper stuff that um, has the regular alcohol and stuff and I regretted it instantly. I never used it and had to go and buy other stuff because it's awful. After using the, um, the Listerine Zero, I believe it is, uh, it it's really no contest. I'd rather pay a couple bucks more to not have that wicked burn in your mouth after you um, rinse your mouth. Some people, you know, think that's, aha, my teeth are clean or my mouth is clean now, but no. It, it's fine to use the stuff that doesn't burn the crap out of your mouth and quite frankly, I, I prefer it that way.